What's going on guys and welcome back to Northern Valley in what's going to be a pretty productive episode. I probably bit off a little bit more than I should have for this episode, but we have a lot of work to do and you'll notice right away that it has to do with the railroad. So in the last episode we did a little bit of like an in-town train depot and this episode's all about getting those train lines hooked up to the harbor now originally way back in the day we had plans to put the harbor on what i think we dubbed the north end of town opposite the dam side of the map so yes uh we were gonna do a lot of terraforming and kind of make like a, a little i guess artificial space for a harbor but i decided that this area that we're working on right now is actually going to be a way better spot for a harbor. It connects straight up to the already existing boat, uh, invisible boat like path work that the game has. So that's nice. It also makes a lot more sense for our train lines. So the weird thing about all this is that we had to do a lot of road work in this episode, which really wasn't that big of a deal. And it was kind of fun, but it was kind of a headache. So we'll do a lot of that. But right now, all we're trying to do is get all of the height sort of situated for the terrain height over here and where the building's going to sit. And then, of course, the terrain tool comes out. Now, the train line goes across the river here. Now, there are a lot of bridges on this river, but I feel like it's okay. And this bridge for the train in particular is fairly low bridge. Now, boats wouldn't be able to go up this area, but I think it's okay because really the only thing that's up that river is a set of waterfalls and our big dam. Now, bigger boats obviously wouldn't be going up that way, so I think the height of this bridge ends up being okay. Of course, we'll take a look at this when we get back into the live portion. Now, I had to get the bridge over these key walls and this whole episode is obviously made possible by the Move It tool. Again, this whole series is made possible by the Move It tool. It's just so useful. I also ended up getting the Road Anarchy tool, although I didn't really use it all that much. But this whole area is so tightly knit, it's very hard to get it all kind of situated. And it was, it was really just going in, trying to lay stuff out, and then adjusting it with the Road tools that we have in the Move It tool. And... In the end, it's really awesome. I love this area. It's very busy, but there's not much going on, if that really makes any sense at all. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, it's it's weird because it looks like there's a lot going on, but there's really no buildings that these roads are attached to. Or, yeah, the, <laughs> it's just, it's weird because there's a lot of intersections, a lot of bridge combining to meet each other up and there's is just really a main route to get downtown a lot of cars are getting off the toll road and then coming over to these bridges to get downtown now downtown lockwood does not have really good um highway access especially from this side of the map so these bridges are crucial for that and we even go in later on and you'll see we're adding another route to get to these. So we're bypassing what we already have and we're going to make it a little bit easier for cars to get off of that toll road and then onto these bridges. But right now all we're doing is try to get those bridges adjusted with the height. Now I pulled a locomotive uh, model over here to try to figure out what height these should all be at. Uh, they're pretty low, like I said, but I do feel like this game has artificially high limits on bridges. Now, you really don't need a m really tall bridge for a lot of traffic. I think I've talked about this before, and uh, if you if you notice like actual real world bridges and semi trucks that go under them, they are so close. You are maximizing that space out. So really, dropping these bridges as long as they don't clip vehicles it's it's actually more realistic in a way so yeah there's just a lot of bridge work that we had to do and it's just it, this whole area ends up uh getting built out in this episode now i probably could have stopped after we were done with the harbor area but we actually go in and add a little bit more just to fill this whole area out i thought this would be a really good way to break the episodes up but <laughs> when I was going through and actually doing this, and I did this on stream, by the way, um, but when we were going through and doing this, it took a long time, and I noticed how much work we actually did after 
it was all said and done and I was going through and editing this. It was so much work. And I think I was just having so much fun over on Twitch with you guys that we kind of just lost track of what this project entailed. So, uh, yeah, you guys are getting a pretty big episode out of me here. So that's pretty good for you guys. I also kind of want to take the opportunity to talk. I want to try to get more consistent. And I know I've said this many times before, but I want to get more consistent with uploads and with getting Twitch figured out. And if you guys haven't really heard yet, I've been streaming the live build portions of these series over on Twitch and it's really a lot of fun. So if you guys have time, uh, go over there and follow me and then if i'm on pop in say hi and see what we're doing so you'll get a little bit of a preview for these series and you guys can influence it as well so it's pretty awesome on twitch but i'm hoping that by regularly streaming over on twitch i'll be able to regularly upload these videos a bit more so my plan as of now is to stream city skylines on Tuesdays and Wednesdays on Twitch. I usually start around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and we go for a few hours. We get a lot of work done. It's really awesome. And then if you're a fan of the Planet Coaster series, my plan is to start streaming those on, I think, uh, maybe Wednesdays if we finish up the city's skyline stuff really early, but definitely on Thursdays and Fridays. So the, I stream for about two to four hours per session over there, and when I've been building these series or these episodes in the past, it's been about four to six hours worth of work. So we're getting a lot done and it's pretty much the same amount of content. And you guys can just influence stuff a little bit as we're over there. So a lot of people on Twitch for this episode were telling me to get the Road Anarchy tools because it would make a lot of this kind of stuff a lot easier. And I thought I had them, but apparently I didn't. So yes, using the suggestions from the Twitch chat really influenced this episode. Uh, and it really helps. I love seeing you guys. I've got some people popping in that are regulars over there. And it's, it's just so nice to see the community over there. So like I said, I don't want to talk too much about Twitch, but um, it's it's really fun. I also want to maybe start doing like a, a once a month live stream maybe on YouTube. That might be kind of a fun thing. So you guys are going to have to let me know what you think about that in the comments. We might just do something where we pop around. It might be more of like a Q&A type thing. And uh, we'll just kind of go around the city and see what's going on. Or like just go into a random park or something in, in a game and just kind of hang out. I feel like that'd be kind of fun, but uh, anyway, uh, I don't want to ramble on too much about that. But yes, look for more consistent content in the future. This week and next week, I'm going to be trying to stick to that schedule and really push hard to get these episodes done on a really regular basis. But what we've been doing as we've been ranting on here is connecting up the railroad. Now, originally, I really didn't think we were going to connect this railroad up this way. I It, just, it was kind of a weird feeling to me just having a railroad on this cliffside now looking at it now it's kind of cool i think i don't know if it's unrealistic it may be but uh it's a really nice way to get trains over here as you can probably remember we had the train line wind all the way up through those mountain passes all the way around the park and all the way back here so we were not actually getting a lot of trains coming this way just because of the path. But now it's a lot shorter, and so we're actually gonna see a lot more trains from that edge of the map coming this way. I feel like before, there were a lot of trucks coming from that side of the map because it was a far more efficient route to get there. But now we'll see a bunch of trains. We'll also see those boats coming in, and those boats are gonna be huge. You'll occasionally see, as we were testing these streets and stuff, how many trucks actually come out of that harbor as soon as a boat ends up here. And I think this is just going to be because of the location of this harbor. It's connected really well to the outside route, obviously, but it's also pretty much right downtown. I mean, it's just a bridge away from downtown, and downtown is by far our most dense area, obviously, but yes, uh, the the goods that come in are going out to everywhere. We also are going to see some of the exports eventually come down this way, and that's something we got to figure out as well and all of the industry that we have yet to put in in this map. But I want to talk right now about what we're doing on screen, and that is putting these really awesome things underneath this uh, bridge or elevated road section here. Now, originally, that was just terrain up to there. I had a very 
I guess, strong opinion on the terrain over there. It was such a sharp cutoff, and when you get up to the... I've talked about this before, I know, but as soon as you get really close to those cliff sides in this terrain pack or whatever the 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 theme that I have on here, it looks really bad. Far away, it looks great. Like, way back in the distance, you can kind of see it looks really good, but really close to it, it looks awful. So, what we did is actually cut that out all together and put these little cement blocks underneath the uh, elevated path there, or elevated road. It is so nice, and I think those were originally made to be parts of like a an overpass or a bridge anyway, so it fits right in, and it just makes this whole area look so much nicer than it did. Now, we also had to deal with the key walls that are such a pain to get right. Now, the Move It tool obviously makes this way easier, but really the best way that I've found to do this is to just put the key walls in just where the wherever they'll go in and then move it with the move it tool. It's so nice. It does take a lot of time and your game will freak out as you can probably see on screen. Uh, it's very, very tough to get it to work, but in the end, it's really worth the effort. Now, I was kind of worried about this with the way the river is uh, because in this game, the water... Um, how do I want to say this? It takes forever to react to terrain to changes. And as soon as I flattened like the edge of that riverbed out, I was really worried that something would just go wrong with it. And just a, I've noticed small tweaks can sometimes make a huge difference in water in this game. But luckily, we didn't have to deal with that too much and everything came out just fine. But we're bopping back over to this area, which is the area where all of the cars are coming off of the toll road through the toll booths and this is what I was talking about earlier this is an easier way for vehicles to get over here now originally I was just gonna go over these highway passes as you can see I really didn't like how that looked and it was pretty it was lazy if I'm being honest it was a really lazy approach to get that done and really all I wanted to do was get this in there and make it look like it wasn't forced in there so it took a lot of tweaking as you can see a lot of move it going on here we're trying to get these ramps lifted up and then all of this space kind of situated so we're sinking the main toll road down we're lifting the ramps up over it and we're putting this new elevated bridge connection in underneath or well it's kind of threaded in between it all so in the end, this comes out great, but it was a very big pain to get all done and done properly. Now this, at this point, I had installed Road Anarchy and it kind of helped, but then again, I'm not really good with that tool just yet. I was very confused at times and it didn't seem like it was helping at times and then other times you would uh, turn it on and then try to connect to a node and it wouldn't connect to the node. It would just put a, a bridge over it, which was very weird. And I know that's probably just me not knowing these tools, but uh, I'll have to get used to those for the future. And uh, as you can see right now, we're just trying to get these ramps situated, all of the heights and the levels all sorted out. Now, reconnecting this, I think, what is, does it say? The eastbound traffic? Um, reconnecting this up looked fine, but as soon as I played it and the cars started to merge on, it was really weird because the cars would merge from the ramp all the way across to the far lane of traffic. Now, eventually, uh, we had to delete that and then try to figure out a better way to do it. Now, I am probably not very happy with the way this turns out as you can see it was very finicky I was trying to get the road to connect and it wasn't doing it for whatever reason I tried to turn on road anarchy to get it to work it wasn't doing it for whatever reason and eventually we just kind of found a way to connect this up and make it not look terrible and it worked and I just it's one of those things where I'm not really all that happy with it but it's one of those things that just has to work for now, I think. It was it was just not happening. But as you can see, we connected these roads over with a main connection piece. And it was causing a huge backup in traffic all the way back onto the off-ramps of the turnpike. So in the end, we actually killed that connection. And even though traffic had to go farther around it and go through a more dense area it really saved a lot in the long run. So we're not contending with a bunch of people trying to get off the highways and onto these like connector streets. We pretty much have a decent flow and we actually go through an up 
or upgrade all of the uh, street types to kind of handle all of the capacity that we're adding to this area. This town, I always knew it was going to be pretty uh, heavy traffic, but I never imagined it was going to be this bad. And really, in the end, after we sort all of these roads out, it's really not all that terrible. It's still got its backups, but it's kind of like expected backups and nothing too crazy. But uh, we're bopping back over to do some more nature work around the area. Now we're grabbing those rocks and trees that we've been placing around the area. And it's really interesting. Like the area that we're working on right now, I believe we call this Winterfell. Um, this area was done way early on in the series. So it's really cool to see how I've grown as like a designer in this game over the past, uh, I want to say the series has been going on for probably over a year now. I don't know. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm pretty sure someone will let me know in the comments or I can even go look it up. But it's really interesting to see how I've evolved. And before, way early on over here, we had basically just scattered trees around. But as we've downloaded more assets and got more stuff going on, um, we've gotten like underbrush and rocks and all that kind of stuff. So now the cliff sides look awesome. So I was trying to get some of that influence over to this side of the map and try to spread like the... Uh, or blend the styling together, if you will. So it looks really nice now. I do want to kind of chill on the rocks a little bit. I feel like I've been using them probably too much, but at the same time, it just looks so much better than having that artificial terrain cliff texture that we have. But um, you're seeing right now that we're putting in this little tram stop and it came out pretty nice. Uh, but the tram was one thing that we had to actually reroute through this area. So we added a little connector piece and put the tram through there before it was going around that main road and it's kind of hard to like describe all this but uh we'll go through in the live portion and check it all out no worries but uh we took the tramps off of that main road earlier and now they're cutting through a little side street to get to their destination quicker this also opened up a lot of space for cars to go through so that's one of those little tweaks to the traffic pattern that we had to do in order to get uh, the traffic flowing a little bit better through this area and again it's it's not terrible which is pretty much all we could ask for at this point but anyway we're going through and doing a bunch more tree work like I was talking about and we're mixing some of those trees that we've been using just in all these areas and I, f I found that as you design something in this game you can kind of just go back and copy and paste what you have and not only is that making it easier on yourself but it's also helping you blend styles and and the different assets that you use for nature because that's how nature works i mean your trees like they they drop seeds or whatever and the there's like trees that grow around them and all that kind of stuff so that's really what we're trying to simulate and i feel like we're getting to that point where it's, it's pretty nice but we're actually going back over to the harbor now to do some detailing and putting in some of the uh, road work and all that kind of stuff over here. Now, I will preface all of this by saying that I know pretty much nothing about cargo yards. I'm sure it's a really terrible cargo yard, but from a glance, it looks okay. And that's all I was going for. I don't want anybody like yelling at me in the comments, although I'm sure there will be some people, but um, it's just, it's such a weird, awkward space down here that I felt like just kind of throwing stuff together and making it work as it can is pretty much what they would have had to do if they were building this from scratch. And I, I feel like you would have, they would have had this built throughout like history, if you will. This wasn't like a new modern part of the city. This was probably a very old dock. And then eventually the railroad probably went through it and uh, it, it grew into this modern thing. So we're just trying to jam a lot of detail down to this area and a lot of things that would probably be in a cargo yard so we're gonna go through and put a bunch of these truck stops in or not stops but truck parking spaces in just trying to get this kind of sorted out and this is kind of like a staging area in my mind so trucks would have to go into that little harbor uh garage area to get unloaded potentially um i feel like this is one of those things where we probably should have put some sort of crane out there uh to kind of symbolize all that but it's, it's kind of awkward. Uh, what we're doing right now is actually putting a, another staging area, but this is not for semi-trucks. This is for vans and I guess mid-sized trucks, if that makes sense. Like the uh, little box trucks and that kind of stuff. So this is 
kind of like a, a third parking lot. And then obviously we have our little car parking lot, but we had to go through and detail all this stuff out as well. And that is of course some jobs for some fences and fencing in this game is kind of weird uh, at times because you got to pretty much decide where a fence is going to start and end. And you have to use a little bit of logic to figure it out. You really want to contain an area, but you don't want to like, just, I, I don't know, you don't want to start and stop fences just randomly, because then it would just be strange. But uh, we're trying to do that. But what we're doing right now is actually pretty cool. We're putting these curbs down. I found these uh, cement curbs, and we're using this as a pretty much a containment area for the terrain painter tool. Now, if you've known the terrain painter tool throughout the series, it is kind of annoying to get to work correctly because of the way it draws diagonal lines. Well, actually, I, I don't know, either diagonal or straight lines, whichever way you want to look at it. The other one gets really weird where it doesn't draw a straight line. It just draws these like little patchy lines. So to combat that, we put those curbs down and that hides all of that weirdness that we get when we place all that down. So I am going to probably be using that technique a little bit as we move on. And by a little, I mean probably a little bit more than that. <laughs> so a lot as we move forward because it hides it so well and it looks very natural and it just looks so nice. But uh, of course, we're doing some more nature work. And that's one of those things that I was saying is the rocks. I don't want to get too carried away with rocks. But at the same time, those rocks look so good on a cliffside that I feel like we need them. And it really adds a lot. I'm probably going to try to stay away from the rocks a little bit more on like flat surfaces and really only use those for like cliffs. But we'll see as we move forward what we have to do to get that to look not so like dense, I guess is a word to use there. But uh, we're putting a little bit of green space in this area. Not too much. This isn't supposed to be a nature area. This is supposed to be an area where we've developed over the years, but there's just that little bit of nature that's kind of survived. Maybe it was taken out at one point, but it kind of grew back as nature does, and no one's ever really came back to, I guess, take it back down because no one really needs to. But yeah, it's just kind of that nice little area. It, it blends a little bit more uh, of that original nature work that we have on the cliffside in, and it's one of those things that it breaks the area apart a little bit. We have these train lines running all over the place. We have this pavement pretty much all over the place as well. And really in a city, you get a lot of pavement and not so much green space, which is one thing that I feel like I've struggled with in this game a lot. When I go downtown, I don't know what the right balance of like grass to concrete is. And when you take a look at like pictures of actual cities, you get a lot of concrete. And I always feel like I'm overdoing the concrete in this game, but really... Probably not. I mean, we should probably be using these curbs a lot more in that kind of work where you're kind of differentiating stuff and, and segmenting out pieces of land and you're trying to guide like traffic and pedestrians through that stuff. But uh, I don't know. I guess that's a topic for another time. But what we're doing is going ahead and putting some of these cargo containers down. Now, this is the one thing that I probably... I'm not even close on. I mean, I have no idea how a cargo yard runs or works or anything. And my best guess is from playing uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And what I know about that is people leave the doors open all the time. And there's like guns and everything all over the place. But no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, I really have no idea how to lay this out. So what I was doing is just trying to get it to a point where if you step back and look at it, it just looks like... There's cargo containers over there. There's a harbor over there. You know that there is a shipping yard around there and that's where the freight goes. I probably blew it on how these all work. It's probably way too uh, condensed and there's just a lot of different directions things are going. That's probably not how it works, but do I care? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm sure some of you people out there are probably hating me for this right now, but I feel like it's okay. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Now, I guess the one thing I will say is that maybe if you guys leave me some comments uh, about this kind of stuff, I can take that into account when we're going to be doing our train yard. We're going to be planning to do, well, I am planning to do a very large train yard and a freight yard somewhere way off in the distance on the map. Uh, that 
is going to be out toward the industrial area, and that's just going to be because we haven't really had a massive train yard yet. And actually, before I talk about that, I want to mention that using those uh, cranes and then pulling a container with the move -a tool up to where the crane is like holding it and moving it, that adds so much to this area. It's so awesome. But anyway, the train situation, we're, I originally wanted to do like a train depot around here and actually on the other side of that little elevated roadway that we put in. Uh, the original plan was to do a train depot over there. But as things progressed here, there was really not enough room to do a, cr a train depot over there. And I just felt like it would be kind of jamming something into a space that really would look forced and it wouldn't be super realistic. So the plan now for a train yard is to go through over by where we're going to be doing the natural resources and all that, all that good stuff. We're going to have a very large tr uh, train yard over there. We have a lot of space to work with over there, and it's going to be pretty awesome. I am probably going to go in and try to educate myself a little bit about how train yards work and what they look like when we do that kind of work over there. But for now, I feel like this container yard is adequate for what it is. I mean, it's really just a maze of containers. They may be older containers, and that's why they're in there for storage, and they're not really in there, like, logically or there's really no rhyme or reason to it all. You know, it is what it is. I felt like this area underneath these elevated, the elevator roads over here needed to be kind of like in a disarray. So you'll actually see me later on go through under those, under that bridge right there and actually go in and put some rubble and like trash down there just because I felt like we needed some place in the city like that. But you're noticing right now that I'm pulling these roads underneath that. I actually went through and I created a road path all the way through those containers. Now, this is actually a recycling center that we placed in, but the little semicircular building over there is a train depot. Now, when I put that in, that was my original intent, like I said, but when I put it in, I noticed how little space we have over here, so I really didn't want to force it in there. So what we're doing instead is just using this area as a trash area. Now, at the very beginning of this episode, you noticed maybe it was very quick. I ended up having to take some of the trash buildings that we had over here and move them off to the side to begin working here. So for the longest time, we had uh, crematoriums and trash incinerators over here. N now, we did all this harbor work, but we still need a place for these uh, trash re receptacles, if you will. And so that's what we're doing over here. So there was pretty much always my plan to put these in over here. I just didn't know how well they'd fit over here. And in the end, I feel like it's a really good spot for it. It's kind of remote and those roads, like I said, there's not much going on in them. So it's really just like a non nonsense area to put something like this. There's really not that many housing units around here. It's kind of separated by the river on one side and the toll road on the other side. So any of the pollution that's getting produced over this way is getting, I, I guess it's just not that harmful, if you will. So really, it was a pretty good spot to put this. And of course, we had to go through and do a little bit of detailing, getting some parking in there. And parking is another thing that I've learned to not try to recreate the wheel every time. Try to go through the city. I've done so many little parking lots around the area already. Why not just copy some of those and move the whole thing over here and tweak it to what we need? Parking and putting uh, cars down in parking lots, as you probably know, can be very tedious. So trying to save some time on doing that kind of work is probably for the best. But you're seeing the curb uh, method, I guess, <laughs> brought back over here as well. And this is such a good way to do these terrain painters. I highly recommend it. Uh, of course, we're putting a lot of curbs down and that could probably potentially be a bit of a hit to performance. But then again, all of the rest of the stuff that we're putting down in the detail work is already a hit to performance. So why not? I've already conceded that this series is gonna be a slideshow by the time it's all said and done, but it's really not that bad to be honest. I mean, if you watch the stream, you'll, you'll know what I'm dealing with as I'm playing this game. It's pretty framey, but it's not unbearably framing, or framey, if you will. So uh, one of the last things we're doing over here is just a little bit of uh, foliage work around the recycle center. 
But I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and hop in to the live portion where we will see what we just did. All right, we are live back in Northern Valley. And before I forget, I actually went through and checked. And yes, it has been over a year of Northern Valley. This series actually started August 14th of 2016. So it's getting close to a two year series. That's insane. How many of you guys have been around since the beginning? I just wanted to see in the comments. That would be crazy. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out what we're doing and get away from all those sirens. So, or what we did rather. So yes, this is the harbor area. And as you can see, I'll give you guys a nice broad overview of everything here. So uh, like I was talking about, the original plan was to put the harbor over here. I was gonna build out this area and put like a train and uh, road line through this actually what those highways over here were for uh, they were gonna go through this little cliffside and over here so the harbor was gonna be pretty much in the middle of nowhere but because we have it over here it's way more logical and we're actually getting the trains coming from this side of the map over to here so yeah for a space and project scope perspective I guess uh, this makes a lot more sense. It's also a very nice way to fill out this area. I had no idea what the plan was for this area up until I thought, you know what, we should put the harbor there instead. And it just all kind of fell together a lot better. So, yes, the cargo is now coming in via boat or train over to here. And I've actually seen a few trains go from the Midtown line or station over here all the way into our cargo network over here. So the cargo in this game, I forgot how fun cargo was to manage in this game, but we still have a lot more of that management to do as we go through. Now, the cargo hub itself is pretty awesome. I love how it came out. I love where it's located, and I love that you can see it from this side of the bay, and or the river, I guess technically is what this is. And yeah, it just looks so cool. It looks like it fits there. And then, of course, we have our little container area over here, which, again, is very strangely put together. I feel maybe I'm making too much of it. I'm sure you guys will let me know. But it is a nice little area. And unfortunately, we have a lot of garbage trucks going through here. I felt like there weren't going to be that many that use this little access road that we've hidden conveniently through the cargo container area. So this whole area is just a nice little utility area for the city. We have our trash over here, obviously, but we also have another trash building over here, which is an aluminum recycling plant. I believe it's a custom mod, of course. But uh, yeah, this whole area is functioning on two fronts, which is a very, very productive use of the space. Now, I think one thing that I actually did cut out completely of the time lapse was this little add on area where I have a second rail that came down through here. And it's just like a little staging area for some train cars. Now, the purpose for, or the reason behind that was because I wanted to put the train depot over here, like I was saying but it just didn't have enough room. So I figured there'd be some sort of, uh, like, cache for the cars over here, and it, it just added a little bit to this area. But, okay, so on the topic of the train yard, I think we're going to be ending up putting a train yard over here somewhere. Like, there is so much just, like, flat-ish space over here. Uh, the more I look at this, the less flat I think it is. But, yes, over here we have a lot of natural resources. I can actually show you guys real quick what we have going on over here. So this is a very good, valuable spot for our city. We have oil in the hills. We have, what is this, ore all over these hills. There is so much ore. And then we have fertile land that kind of just populates the river over here. So this is going to be a very, very large industrial area for us. And that's always been the plan. And you can actually see where I've kind of marked out some of these roads already to where I think we need to put another on-ramp to the turnpike and all that kind of stuff. But 
yeah, this is going to be huge for us. We're going to be able to put a really big rail yard probably around here somewhere. And, of course, we have to figure out all of this train stuff. But we'll get to that when we get down over there. Um, I also want to mention that I think this is going to be where we put our airport. We're going to have the airport on this island. And I've had a few people tell me this is probably not an ideal spot. But when you look at it, it's actually pretty close it's like deceptively far away from the city we have the main city over here and if we put a, a runway here there's no way that planes are going to be going through like buildings or anything that is far enough away that it makes some sense so i feel like that's going to be a pretty decent spot for the airport i know a lot of people are going to probably debate me on that as well but uh we'll we'll figure that all out when we get to that now i also want to talk a little bit about the trams because we haven't really talked about that and this whole connection situation over here. Now, this was a pretty interesting task. Now, originally I was not even planning to have this in or this little connection road in here. I was just going to uh, reroute all of these over the rail line and all that kind of stuff over here and make these elevated roads look pretty good and connect to the bridges. But then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, you know what? A lot of the traffic we have, and there was a lot of traffic over here, it's because that's the only way over here. So by putting this little connection bridge, or whatever you want to call it, in over here, it really divides the traffic up properly. And this actually ends up being a very nice way to cope with all of the traffic that we have. Now, originally I had put a connection road between these two. And as you may or may not have seen in the time lapse, it was backed up to like here, this traffic, because there were people trying to turn and they would just back this all up. And that is one thing that I did not want to see. So instead of that, we've deleted that little crossroad. And now all of our traffic has to go down this very massive, what is this, five lane road down this way. And then a lot of them turn into this little area. And now it is a little bit less efficient because you have to come all the way down here and circle back. But it helps because now we have like a little bit of a queue space that we could have in case we had a ton of traffic. And this whole thing is seeming to cope fairly well with all this. So it's really not that big of a deal. But we did originally have the tram system coming down this way and then looping back through this little square that we already had. And by taking this connecting road and connecting it up, we've actually eliminated the need for the tram to come through here. Now that makes all of this traffic, and there is a lot of traffic as you can see, it makes all of this a little less congested because there's no tram trying to compete for space over there. We still have buses that come down this way, but it's not that big of a deal. And as you can see, there are just a lot of people using all of this public uh, transportation, which is something that we probably need to figure out at some point. But uh, I'll probably end up doing a lot of like the traffic and public transportation line management stuff on a live stream and not in an episode like this. I want to keep these episodes a little bit more toward the building side of things and maybe the management side will be more in like a stream where you guys can influence and talk to me about that kind of stuff and help me figure out what I'm doing and uh, yeah that kind of stuff works well in a live stream, I think. And if I haven't mentioned already, the live stream link is down in the description of this video. The next episode of Northern Valley, we will be probably coming to this island and getting this little part or little extension of downtown set up. Now, this island is where we're gonna have a lot of like the leisure buildings and a lot of the um, like tourist areas. And we're going to have a little bit of a challenge trying to get some boats and stuff linked up. I'm probably going to need to grab a mod that will let me change the route. Because as you can see, I can't actually find a way to get a boat to connect to the main route over here. So that is a little bit unfortunate. We're going to have to maybe do some tweaking for or tweaking of this little island stuff over here. I'm sure we can figure that out, but we'll do that in the next episode. I think that pretty much wraps up this one. I'm sorry for the delay, but like I said, I am going to be getting more consistent with my uploads. I promise that. And guys, if you like this episode, of course, leave me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, thumbs down. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next episode.